Okay. What's up, guys? I'm very happy. I have a new opportunity to be here and sharing some um, technical conversation with you guys. And uh, well, today we're going to talk about Alphapua technique. I'm not sure about um, my image quality and all this stuff. I'm sorry for my hair. I think I've been too busy with producing new material for you guys on YouTube and this new technical method we've been working on, uh, the picado and tremolo and arpeggio techniques. It takes a lot of time to produce each of these videos. They're represented in 4K HDR, 60 frames per second. So if you want to purchase them, you can contact me on WhatsApp or just text me here. I'll check the comments. Okay, we're going to talk about alpha plot today. But what is alpha plot? Of course, if you are a flamenco guitar, um, a listener, you have definitely heard something like this. You have definitely recognized uh, the sound of this beautiful technique in flamenco guitar. When you're listening to Papa de Lucia or Vicente Amigo, Antonio Ray music, or anybody else. This is the most profound flam guitar technique in my thoughts, and it's very unique. For example, if you are able to play fast picados or arpeggios or tremolo or um, any other basically flam guitar technique, you can probably find something like that if you are listening to a piano performance or a violin performance or anything. But alpha pua is very unique. It is a very unique technique in flamenco guitar because it's very percussive. And even if you play it on muted strings, like, like this, it's, it's like a drumming uh, section, okay? And actually it exists. It is combined with the harmony you're producing because it also is playing chords. just a singular string performance like Picado or when you are playing only with Pulgar. It's a singular performance on each of the strings and it's called Pulgar, but um, Alpha Pua is actually a harmony producing technique which is very important. But there are three different types of performing this technique. The first type is very easy let me turn on my webcam controller. Sometimes I, I'm going to have to um, zoom the image to uh, give you guys a, a better demonstration of the technique. Yes. So as you can see, the angle of my thumb compared to the strings, it is not parallel to the strings. It's like I'm pointing uh, to myself. And you can see a rectangular geometry here. So this is the perfect angle for playing alpha pua. But uh, let me just come back to the original field of view. Um, it is different with different people, okay? With your body type, with your type of, of the only part, this hand uh, part of your, the entire hand, this part is very, very different in each person and I have I've had a study like a couple of years ago and I just figured it out that there are 48 different types of hands in the human body so with each type there is a new mathematical possibility for a new system of technique for playing flamenco guitar or playing anything so it is very good if you recognize if you detect a player a great player which resembles your hand or your, your the geometry of your body, your hand is similar to that person. For example, if you are if you have long fingernails, uh, I'm sorry, if you have long fingers, or if you have short fingers, uh, if the back of your hand is naturally flat when you are playing the guitar, or it's like a feast, these are absolutely different styles, and you're gonna have to find your own. Um, way for specific uh, your own specific way to play flamenco guitar 
But yeah, it is very beneficial if you find someone which your hand is similar to that person and that person is a great player. So uh, do not uh, try to imitate my hand. Um, if you feel that your hand is just like my, my hand, it's okay. But you're going to have to find your way. So probably uh, my angle, I don't know, it maybe is about like 60 degrees, the angle between my thumb and the top part of the guitar. Maybe you feel better at this angle. That's absolutely okay. Doesn't matter, okay? Of the pull consists of three strikes, one pull guard, and well, when I want to play pull guard, actually, I put my indice and medio under the first string, and I just keep these two fingers open. So this is my pull guard, and I rest on the fifth string after I strike uh, the sixth one. Then it's a down up strike. And definitely when I'm playing the down strike, my thumb, also my entire hand moves and it rotates. This is a circular movement and it's very important. This is not a good alfabwa. If you are only moving your thumb, you're not gonna produce enough of momentum. It doesn't sound good, it sounds weak. doesn't sound like the truth about Othapua is, is a, it's like a nuclear bomb sometimes when you're playing Othapua within probably Solea or Buderia or uh, I don't know Seguiria or Tango or Buderia very common um, explosive Othapua appearance happens in these kinds of palos actually so yeah, you have to rotate your wrist. It is a circular, it is a probably half circular movement when you play off of one. Okay. Pull guard, down, up. And just please let me zoom the work in a little bit again. Okay. I told you at the beginning of my performance, my indita and my medio, my index and my medium finger are actually resting on the first string. Logically, when I am performing this strike, they're gonna be separated from the first string. But the secret is here. When I play the back strike, they just get back into action here. And it sounds like this. It prevents my thumb and my entire hand to move more than needed. I have to, you know, get back and just be at the first position for playing the next sixth string again. So if I don't do this, the next strike would be probably hard, target, and you know, I may not be successfully performing it. So just calm down, put guard, down, up and resting just just like it just like the beginning of the strike here underneath the first string. Students ask me a very frequent question when it comes down to playing alpha qua. Well, um, flamenco guitar is being taught and learned via musical ear by listening and watching your maestro and imitating and playing. And that's in my thoughts, that's the most um, beautiful and um, most permanent way of learning Islamic guitar. I believe if you are actually learning music by reading the notes, it takes you more time to memorize it, and it takes you less time to forget it. So in my opinion, it's best if you just look and you listen and try to figure that out. It's going to make you a great Islamic guitarist because if you have a poor musical ear, um, you can you can never become a professional guitar player. As you can uh, see in my uh, YouTube page, I've been actually posting some educational content here, and um, every uh, little and big lesson we're actually producing, most of them we don't have a clue. We don't have a musical sheet for that, or tabulations or anything, and we're proud because. Um, uh, actually, we are probably the first team 
worldwide, which are producing this material. But I want to write down the notes and the tabulations because the students are supposed to have a reference. And uh, if you are checking what you have figured out already, you're going to have to have something to refer yourself to and uh, see what's going on. So please, if you are actually using OR method or any other method, if you have the tabulations of the content, please just try for a couple of days or three figuring it out on your own without uh, reading the notes uh, on a musical sheet. Um, what is that? Please try to attack to the music. Your first attack to the music when you want to cover it is very important. That is the thickest and most clear image of that content in your mind. So let that be the sounds and the pictures, not the notes. Because when you are actually playing uh, from the notes, you are compiling it. You are translating it into the music, the sound, and the picture. So you are doing two calculations. Don't do that. The first encounter of your mind with the music should be only the sounds and the images. Uh, okay. One question the students ask me is that why do you um, write the entire strings, but you don't probably play them? For example, it's written a strike on the fourth string, and I am holding a B flat and D and a open first string which produces E. It's the augmented 11th uh, B flat major chord which resembles endurance in flat guitar in my thoughts. If you're talking about love and passion, if you're in love and it's hard and you're tolerating its heat and the jealousy probably or stuff like that, very beautifully into a um, nine flat chord or a add bemol nine chord which resembles a foggy unclear mysterious char flamenco character which we can find in every palo in a flamenco it sounds like this in b flamenco like granaina or rumba or stuff like that it sounds like this in C sharp flamenco, in some Bulerias falsetas. It sounds like this. In Vicenta Amico Bulerias, and the beginning of Granaina, uh, Vicenta Amico's Granaina Morente, the tonality is D sharp flamenco. the flat nine interval produces the entire foggy mysterious character in these chords. If you're playing in E flamenco, solea, fandango, malaginia, adding this F note to this E makes that sound. Or if you're just playing playing an F sharp flamenco like Taranta or, or if you're just doing this this is G which is a flat nine interval for F sharp so these are the effect of chords and it, it was a big parenthesis because I always wanted to talk to you about this and of course in Minera the last one I think which is in G sharp Phrygian or G sharp flamenco probably G flat it is a minor second, which is an octave smaller than a flat one, but they resemble the same note, a regular A, which when you combine the sound with a G, it produces that mysterious sound, that mysterious character again. Okay? And you play Minera. Okay, so this augmented 11th chord, we're talking about this, it solves best 
into the previous degree at bemol 9 of the, the Phrygian scale tonic. Or if you're playing, for example, sol a, same thing. So when we are playing al fapua, we get back to the previous um, main discussion. If you are playing this down in up strikes, you're probably not covering the entire strings underneath the string. You're performing your pulgar. We have to write it in the musical sheet. So you can uh, actually take the entire um, chord. But probably we don't play that. Maybe I don't play the first sound. Maybe I sometimes play it where the resonance effect of the vibrating second and third strings are causing the first string to vibrate a little bit. So I have to take the chord, but I don't have to really care about the first string. Just act naturally. It, it's okay. If you play it, it's a chord. If you don't play it, it's a different chord, but they are entirely actually sounding great. Okay? So just don't care about it too much. Down, up. The pulgar, which string to be executed, it matters. Um, it actually it is connected to the chord you're performing. If you want a D here, or you just want a B flat, or you want an E on the sixth string, or an F. So alfapua is very very easy in the first time of it. You just perform a pulgar, a down, and an upstrike. And actually, we see it in many, many different falsettas. In fast or normal paces, the, the beginning of Al Muraima from Paco de Lucia actually implements this type of alfa, but this falsetta you definitely. <laughs> second fret of the fourth string it covers uh, it not it is not actually holding the first string the first string is open but two three and four the fourth string are held with the semi bar I just play like this from Paco de Lucia actually is implementing the first type of alfapua. And at the end of the falsetta, we see it again. It is a fast form, it is a triadic form, and it's very, very easy to play, actually. You, you just need to hold a D, a B flat, C sharp, or the, uh, for the last pulgar. And let me just tell you something. This first type of alfapua, it may start with the pulgar or it may start with the down strike, doesn't matter. The relativity of the strikes matter. And it tells you after the pulgar, you have the down strike. After the down strike, you have the up one. After that, you have the next pulgar and so on, infinite loop. Okay, it doesn't matter which strike to start with. Here, we start with a down strike. Up, C sharp. And of course, when I am performing my pulgar on the sixth string, my next down and up are executed on the fifth. Because I don't have time when I'm playing fast off up, I don't have time after the pulgar to actually, uh, to, you know, take off my, um, uh, I'm sorry, to lift my uh, thumb and just to put it on the next string. I don't have time for that. I have to. Uh, um, actually uh, maintain some chords which makes my entire performance sound clear and right. So you don't have time for that. After you execute your pulgar, immediately you perform the, the down and up strike. So F, G, down, up, B flat, C flat, B flat, F, A single A. And I know 
there are different types and ways to play this with different melodies, but the entire concept I'm talking about. So this is the first type of Otakwa. What is the second type? The second type is mathematically different. It produces a binary. Actually, it's a quadruple. It produces a four. It absolutely has to start with the pulgar. And the first three strikes are probably just the same as before. But it also has a fourth pulgar, a fourth strike, which is a pulgar. So it's basically like this. If I want to play it on different strings and just calm down. Six, down, up. My in this medio are not under the first string anymore. The back of my finger, the back of my finger, this pink part of my fingernails are actually resting on the top side of the guitar. So it moves just like this. Just like when you're playing picado. And you are actually going up. The first three strings you are striking, your thumb is resting on the sixth string. But gently it just attaches and it continues its rest on the top side of the guitar only. Okay? The same thing is about the pulgar and alfaqua. When I come down, from some point on, probably from uh, the third string on, I have to detach my indita and menu from the first string, but the back of my finger is still resting on the top part of the guitar. Okay. And uh, I'm frequently using it. This is the top. I mean, this red part of my guitar, it's called the top. It's not literally the top best part of my guitar, but it's called the top or the face. So, let me just come back. The second of our pot side starts and finishes with the pulgar in every cycle. One, two, three, four. Probably hold some frets when you're playing it. Um, seven, down, up, seven, eight, down, up, eight, nine, down, up, nine, ten, four, seven, down, up, eight, nine, down, up, ten, the next seven. Imagine you are playing the Yamada. Look at here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, because of the compact of. Seguiria. Uh, let me talk a little about Seguiria. Seguiria is about a funeral. I believe when someone great is missing, for example, when Paco died, actually Vicente Amigo created a beautiful Seguiria, uh, you know, for the glorious Paco de Lucia. Or I believe when Paco's mother passed away, there was this beautiful album which was called Lucia. Lucia was the name of Paco's mom as far as I know. And there's a very beautiful Sayuri in that which Paco has actually sing a song in there. He's actually singing a song in there. And it's like, um, yeah, it's a very sad hollow. It's like you've lost the loved ones of yourself and you're playing something. So when you are playing Sayuriya, you're bleeding actually in heart and in the spirit and you're broken and you're like tired. You know, you uh, it's like, uh, you're facing a loss. So. So I lower my dynamics 
or I just enhance it when I really am like crying or I'm shouting what, what, uh, what kind of a loss I'm facing and how unfortunate this situation is. So, um, yeah, we're talking about the falsetta. And the segiria has a very unique compass. Um, if you are familiar with the compass uh, 12 system, it, it's like a clock. And it's like a metronome which you can adjust and uh, you can command the metronome to start counting from every different uh, number around the circle. And from some, um, if it's actually passing from some special numbers like 12, 3, 6, 8, and 10, it just counts emphasized. Like 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and stuff like that. And uh, there are some, there are a few Paolo's which are actually uh, being counted based on this circle, which I'm going to uh, demonstrate probably later and bring you guys some animation so you can understand in a better way. But in that compa, uh, in that uh, circle, the Seguiria's starting point is number eight. So you count Seguiria like this. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you just keep going like that. And the falsetta <clears throat> follows the same pattern. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Persian, it means three. I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Let me just do it again. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. you have practiced this famous falsetta it's in Juan Martin books so I think every flam guitar student in the world probably has played this one with pulgar and bitter and if you have practiced this you can just turn it into a beautiful uh, training session for alpha Fua. For type B, very as simple as taking a piece of cake. What is the type three and how it's executed? How to play the third type of Alfaqua, which is a magic. It is a total, absolute magic. Every time I play it for a student, for a for a person who has no idea about flunky guitar, it they are amazed not because i play it good it's very simple actually i think alfoco is the simplest technique in flamboyant guitar but it's probably the most dominant one and it sounds it, it can sound great what is that of course you have definitely listened to tango if you are actually subscribing my page or any other flamboyant guitar page it sounds like this <laughs> something like this. What is 
the chain resistance value. This is alpha four times three. And probably it's the easiest, fastest, and most impressive one. It holds a few secrets, which I just, I felt very good today. I'm very blessed. And I just wanted to share this very, very important information with you guys. How to play the third type of alpha four. It basically starts with the second type. It's like a switch to a car. You just mm, turn, I, I don't know, start a car and you just you switch and then you just start going and just keep going. So the first four strikes are the second type. Pull guard, down, up, pull guard. From the second cycle on, you have to replace the first pull guard with a legato. What is a legato or ligado? I think in Spanish probably. Ligado, it means that you have to, you're gonna have to play a note, a single note, which it provides its mechanical energy from the previous note. And mechanical energy means striking when you're playing flanco guitar. Or if you're playing violin, it means a new movement with a new direction. You're keeping squeezing, 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 and if you change the direction, it produces a new sound with a new momentum. So when you are playing legato, you are providing the energy of your new note from one previous note, just like this. I hold the second fret of the sixth string, I perform it without new strikes. I just hammer on the next frets or backwards. I play here, I pull it off. This is two types of legados. Probably you slide or you just um, play it as a glissando. Look at that. If you are, if you have a um, handcrafted flanco guitar, the action of these guitars are very low and it's possible and probable to play and execute legados very effortlessly, which is very important if you're playing flank guitar. There's also, also a fourth type, which is probably the main secret in playing third type of Wathakwa in flank guitar, and it's called tapping. Tapping basically means I don't strike any strings. I just tap without any vibration produced with my right hand, I just tap. Actually, you can tap and then pull off. Or you just tap and then hammer. Or you just tap and slide. So tapping is very crucial. Why? Because we want to produce chains of alfaqua sometimes, like this. What am I doing here? I just told you I started the second type. One, two, three, four. Legato, which is pull off because I'm moving backwards, I'm lowering the frequencies. This is a secret because if you want to, if you don't know, you can actually implement this tapping technique. You are trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to pull it off? Because I have reached from the third fret to the second, to the open, and now what am I going to do about it? Do this? I can't, because I'm holding a B flat and a D here. So this is actually the secret. You have to practice this first. F, E, D, tapping on C, pulling off to B flat, pulling off to A. This is the most important secret in playing the third type, the most important type of alfaqua technique. Look at this. Type, uh, alfaqua type two. Pulgar, down, up, pulgar. Legato, or pull off. Down, up, pulgar. Legato, down, up, pulgar. Tapping. Legato, down, up, pulgar, and legato. Just add some continuity to it. 
into it after you practice it for a couple of days or three. And your finger movement becomes minimal in time. That is also a different and another secret to this. You probably can just play it. If you want to make it fat, and it probably doesn't even sound good. So you just put a minimalistic vibration instead of rotation in your wrist. When you're playing minimal, minimalistic al which your down and upper strike becomes very, very, becomes a little displacement. It's probably not a whole movement anymore. It's just like a vibration. But don't get it wrong. Some people think that I am actually playing it like this. Because of the natural uh, shape of my thumb finger, uh, I used to be MMA fighter, and we used to punch and lift weights. And if you actually uh, find me slipping, and I when I sleep, it, I I look completely like a beetle. Actually, I, I just sleep like this. And if you watch me, my hands, my thumb is always it's not straight. Actually, I have to pull it back if I want to keep it here like this. Naturally, my thumb when I play a down strike, it just it just stays like this. So I, I'm not playing al using here. I am not doing this. I'm ab absolutely using my wrist, but it, become, it becomes minimalistic, and you think like that. It's an illusion. Don't do that. Please just don't do that. As you can see, my wrist is still shaking. practice how to make it faster the last secret about of Thapua technique well I recommend you a system of practicing which I also implement in enhancing the speed of picado and double arpeggio and descending arpeggio which are also having a lot of trouble many students have trouble enhancing the speed of these techniques <clears throat> or even abanico which is very 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 similar to Thapua when you want to en enhance the speed of it First of all, please practice slowly for a month or 40 days or, I don't know, maybe two months. Try to monetize. Try to um, understand every little and big step you are taking while playing with these techniques. Please practice it like this in the beginning, at the beginning. Pause. pause does not exist in the music but you have to let your mind think and you know have a, a map have a I don't path in your mind for playing this playing fast is like running how the hell on earth you're gonna you're gonna um, run if you don't know how to walk so start by walking in every little and big technique, please. Picado, al it doesn't matter. Play very slowly. And if you want to make it fast, you have to take three major steps. First of all, only add two cycles. Like, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six three cycles so first of all you're gonna have to only add one single pulgar to a three step little cycle you take like one two three four it is the first step then try to make it seven one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then try to make it ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you are able to play tens, 
you are able to play infinites. <laughs> The first, about the first time about the second time about the third time same thing doesn't matter if you're playing with legatos this is from maestro Livio Gianola this taking I absolutely insanely respect and love this guy he is the god of RPG playing I just don't understand him he is a great composer and he's Italian he's not Spanish and for me it's an inspiration I love Spanish players all of them even Rafael Cortez he doesn't know that he thought we were fighting, but we were we were not. I was a little bit pissed off because it was turning into a racial conversation, but absolutely magnificent player. I just expect better picados from him because he's so good. It pisses me off when I watch his performance when it comes down to picado. It's not quantized. It is simply solvable. And then he is a versatile package. I, I have no idea why he was so pissed off. I never actually understood that. He just um, brought this challenge thing to me on Instagram. It was fun. It was good. But I just wanted to tell you, I respect and I love all these different people because I have learned from guitar playing from these people. I never had a maestro except the first two years of my performance. It was back like 18 years ago. And they taught me the content of Juan Martin and Paco Peña and Tomatitos, La Guitarra Flanco books, which are very common. And back there, we used to use cassette layers. The CD, VCD was not created back there. And I'm 31 years old, by the way. And back there, it was like 18 years ago. And uh, because I live in Iran, and we did not have access to anything, we wanted to learn, but there was no maestro, there was no content, nothing, no video even. I happened to know Vicente Amigo only nine years ago when internet and YouTube and stuff like that progress. And my country has a very slow internet. It's solved now, but it was not before, unfortunately. And right now I'm using a VPN to be able to actually um, broadcast this live to you guys. This is a disastrous situation in my country when it comes down to internet. But hopefully and gratefully, thank to God, finally we have it here. We can have actually a, a live video together here. So... I have learned playing flamenco guitar from these people only by watching and having a dream in my mind to become a flamenco guitarist one day. I still have that dream, and I consider myself absolutely only a student. Yeah, even after 18 years. I think if you think you've learned something, you start to go down. So please have this mentality to learn. I think this is the mentality which Paco had. And I absolutely know this is the mentality which Anthony Ray has. We, uh, my brother, my Herman Antonio Ray, if you're watching this live, very, I'm very proud. These people are very eager to learn and change and become better and excel. That is the only secret. Have a dream and go for it. If you haven't managed to do it yet, it means you need more defeats and failures. Success is nothing oh my god success i just said success and my uh, my watch just said success at the same time it was very brilliant success is a only a result of uh what is a sufficiently needed number of failures so please do not get disappointed i have never had a spanish maestro i mean in person i just had a dream and i watched this beautiful guys playing everyone on paco el viejin Chico Elo, Vicente Antonio, Rafael Gorte, Nino de Pura, Pedro Sierra, Tomatito, Serranito, everyone, Javier Conde, every little and big player, okay? What were we actually talking about? Um, what were we talking about? Maybe uh, we were talking about the third type of wealth of But anyway, please just have faith in yourself and just keep training. It happens. It may happen late but it definitely will happen and enjoy the process please if you are only able to play with this speed just please don't curse yourself with anything just enjoy it it's so beautiful it's just slower but if it's right and it sounds good enjoy it we're talking about Livio Gianola he's Italian and uh, he's an inspiration for me actually and he plays 
uh, eight string guitars. And this is a uh, actually uh, this is one of the lessons in his first technique book, I think. Uh, you just hold a B, a D sharp, and an A here, and you start with the second type, as I just mentioned. Legato, tapping, legato. You can only keep practicing with this few four notes. One, two, three, three notes actually. At first, just go step by step. One, two, three, then one, two, one, two. Okay, then three steps. If you are able to play this one, it means you probably have the chance to make it infinite. Beautiful harmony, beautiful, oh my god. He has everything, please just contact him. On YouTube or on Instagram, Livio Gianola. Please purchase his beautiful technique work from himself and um, magnificent arpeggio practicing content. I mean, the best, probably the best in the world, man. This man is crazy when he plays arpeggio. You, you just don't believe that. On eight string guitars. Okay, guys, I think we had a very beautiful session together. It's very fun for me. It's a lot more fun to be on YouTube compared to Instagram, which is a, a total piece of shit. I'm sorry to tell you this, guys. But Instagram is really not a good platform for professionally discuss anything related to music. You don't have good access when you're working with your little cell phone and stuff like that. You just can't study. Please, please buy a laptop or just connect. I have this um, Samsung M7 4K monitor. 32 inches. 32 inches, I, I believe, is the, the most little monitor you need. You can actually go bigger. You're going to have to watch the details in the hands of different players. And, of course, if you are working with us, if you are studying with us, we present you 4K HDR 60 frames per second videos, educational videos. I have played the content like here, and the half... All part of uh, the entire string are the musical sheet. It's, it's the notes, it's the tabulature, tabulatures, and probably a little metronome or compass demonstration is here at this part of the picture. So you need big screens. Please don't work with your cell phones if you want to study flat guitar. Please use a laptop or at least a laptop 15 or I know 14 inches or a TV, a monitor or something. And yeah, I just want to tell you that I'm very happy to be here in YouTube. And um, I think I'm going to be here more frequently. And I, I enjoy talking to you guys. Please uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, oh, my God. I, I have a problem with this sentence. Hit the subscribe bottle. I don't know what, what, what's wrong with me. I don't know. <laughs> so please subscribe if you like this video and press the like uh, uh, icon at, underneath this video as well. And I'm not only here to talk about flamenco guitar. We're going to talk about flamenco, technique, palo, harmony. But flamenco is just a style. It's, uh, of course, it, it has a beautiful philosophy. It is a culture and uh, is a way of life. I know that and it's very respected to me. But as a musician, as a composer, a player, a teacher, uh, music is boundless. And I think... Um, it is, the, it is the sound of the word infinity. Infinity is a mathematical meaning, and music is, is sound. So um, as a musician, I just want to perform, and I just want to be boundless in my mind with no limits, nothing. So flamenco guitar for me is a passion, is a very, very most favorite probably taste and flavor for me that comes out to music. But I would love to talk to you and play and post and share uh, world music or popular music, the good content, of course, 
the real good content of it. For soundtracks, which are also my favorite, we probably talk about, I don't know, maybe, um, for example, the sound the soundtrack of the latest PS5 game is coming, or the soundtrack of the movie Love Story back for 1970s and the 80s and 90s and stuff like that. So just feel free to contact me and please uh, follow us on Instagram and here, and we're going to have a lot of fun together. So take care, take care, take care of yourself with this Omicron and coronavirus so please. Uh, I was diagnosed with this um, actually, um, what is this, catastrophic uh, situation, and I was absolutely about to die. I'm very grateful I'm breathing with my lungs right now. It was a painful situation. And uh, please take care of yourself and have fun. I'll, I'll see you guys later probably. Yeah? Goodbye.